It's banana time. <laughs>
components make a banana split a banana split obviously it's banana but then it's things like you know it's got ice cream so it's got creaminess it's got that kind of vanilla-esque flavor sometimes it's got pecans it's like got all this sort of stuff going on so we we're thinking what beer style most closely would match with that banana full-on flavor wheat beers german wheat beers naturally and belgian beers do have kind of banana and clove like esters that come off from the wheat and from the uh the yeasts they use so we figured you know kind of a match made in heaven we'll go for a wheat ale it's already leaning into that banana flavor we'll whack in all of the bananas and then that way not only are we going to have that banana flavor compounded but we're also going to have that silky mouthfeel that's really characteristic of the german style wheat beer so wheat beer it is and uh, as for the lactose, if you haven't used it before, it's, you know, it's a dairy product. So the idea behind it is that it's not fermentable by yeast. So all of that sugar that gets added by the lactose remains in, pff, remains as residual sugar inside the beer. Benefit of that is that added sweetness, but also this silky mouthfeel that comes through. For example, a lot of chocolate stouts will use lactose to give that really silky finish. So we'll throw some of that in here to really amp up the silkiness and the sweetness of a banana beer. Okay, so we are now finished mashing in. Uh, we're gonna let this thing sit for one hour at 66 degrees, then we're gonna come back and start sparging. So let's pop that filter on top. There we go. Pop our lid on. And we'll start recirculating this. So if you haven't seen one of these videos before, we have a pump set up on our mash time, just lets us recirculate the wort, gives us a slightly better efficiency, helps make the beer a little bit more clear, and uh, helps keep the temperature of the whole system just a little bit more stable. Anyway, none of that matters. We are now mashing in, so we'll come back in one hour and then we'll start sparging. All right, so we have finished mashing and it's now been an hour at uh, 66 degrees Celsius. This is what it looks like. Not what I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting just a nice yellow straw color, but it's come out a little bit murky brown slash gray. <laughs> it doesn't look spectacular. I don't know. This might get fixed up when we boil and we uh, throw in some whirl flock. That might clear out some of those clumpy proteins. Um, but we'll find out what happens. It does smell like intensely like banana. Mm, so good. we're gonna um, stop pumping this around now. We're gonna lift up our um, our grain tube and then start sparging all of this out to get rid of any of those residual sugars trapped inside the grain. So we'll cut to that now. So we'll take a quick little sample of what we've got going on over here. <laughs> that is probably the least appetizing mash I've ever made. <laughs> it's grey! Can you give me a thin? It tastes like a very watery banana. It tastes like if you put a bunch of bananas and water, because you, like you're making a smoothie, but you forget all the other ingredients that you need in a smoothie. That's what that tastes like. It's mm. just like banana and water. That's what it tastes like. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we're going to let this thing drain out. Then we're going to get to sparging to rinse out all those sugars. And then we'll get to boiling and throwing all our hops and all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's get to it. All right, we have a problem. The banana is super goopy and there is a lot of wheat in here. So remember at the start when I said we're going to use rice hulls to make all this drain easier? Well, I don't think we used enough because that would have been enough if it was just wheat that we were dealing with. But I think the fact that we've got so much um, uh, banana in here, it's made a very, very stuck sparge. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try and just like force the liquid of this thing through. We're going to mix it, twist it, and just do whatever we can generally to try and help this water just drain out because otherwise we're going to be sitting here until midnight. So yeah, it, <laughs> it is thick. Down to the bottom. How to fix the stuck spot. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of hear it now draining out the bottom. It's just not ideal. I'd always prefer it for it to drain out properly on its own, but ah uh, well. Normally I don't like doing this because if you mix it around and you disturb the grain bed, then it makes the beer cloudy. Um, like all that stuff, it stops being a clear wort, but 
In this case, that wasn't a problem anyway. It was just grey and disgusting, <laughs> so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> Normally, I do something called fly sparging, which is where basically the water is going, uh, you have a thin layer on top of the grain and just keeps draining through at a very steady rate. But I don't think it's going to work this time because this is still super gloopy. So we're going to be doing batch sparging. So anyway, what it basically means is we're going to take in batches 20 litres total of sparge water at, uh, it's at 79 degrees Celsius. Mix it through this, we're going to give it a good mix and then try and force it to drain out and keep rinsing and repeating to get all of these sugars into the wort. So, let's get started I guess. Batch sparging is also a good option. Um, it's often easier to control because fly sparging is only effective if it's really done properly. Otherwise you create channels in the grain and that basically the water isn't draining through all of the grain, it's just draining through certain channels in the grain. So you're not actually getting proper efficiency. Anyway. Let's, oops, oh fuck, that's hot. What is that? Three liters. Let's start with this. We'll give this a mix around. And then we'll force this to drain out. Get that banana, boy. All right, here we go. Boiling has well and truly started. If you want to come and get a shot of this. We are going to add our bittering hops now. So this is just going to be five grams of Northern Brewer. Doesn't need to be a bit of beer. So we'll chuck them in, start your clocks, and come back in 45 minutes to add your world flock and your lactose. Okay, so it's now been 45 minutes. It's time to add our world flock tablets and our lactose. So just go ahead, chuck it straight in. We're gonna chuck our lactose in as well. The reason we're throwing lactose in now is because Basically, it's just going to make it easier for that lactose to dissolve than trying to add it when all the wort is already cooled down. So, add the lactose. <laughs> Bit of traffic. Add the lactose. <laughs> That's our makeup artist. <laughs> My hair is not scented. All right. <laughs> Pops time. We've got five minutes left in the boil. Time to add your aroma and flavor hops. In this one, we are doing 25 grams each of Azaka, Astra, and Lotus hops. So a whole bunch of super fruity hops that are going to introduce a bunch of like vanilla, mango, you know, different tropical stone fruits, all that kind of really nice tropical flavors, which I think probably matches the banana idea. So anyway, we'll see how that turns out. Five minutes left of this, then we're going to go flame out, start whirlpooling and cooling this down to pitch our yeast. All right, it's flame out time. So it is time to turn off all of your heat sources and start whirlpooling and cooling this thing down. We are gonna attach this one to our counterflow chiller. Uh, I didn't have it set up on time, but whatever. There we go. All right, we're gonna start cooling this thing down. Once you get it down to yeast pitching temperature, which in this case, we can get away with about 25 degrees Celsius. We're gonna tr transfer all of this into the fermenter tank, whack our yeast in and start fermentation. We've reached the end of our banana split milkshake wheat ale brew day. So this thing is ready for yeast pitching now. It's down to yeast pitching temperature. We're going to throw all of this into our bucket fermenter along with this little mixture here. So this is a vanilla extract tincture that we've made. So this is just one large vanilla bean split down the middle, scrape out the insides, chop it up, throw it into the mix with your alcohol of choice. In this case, I've gone for a very uh, fruity rum. So. I think they'll pair nicely with a really banana-y beer. So anyway, we're going to throw that into the fermenter along with all of this, as well as with our yeast culture. So this is a culture that we made using Safael K97 yeast. So this is a German style wheat beer yeast, which is going to help bring out all that banana, clove and really aromatic uh, compounds into our final product. So we'll whack this in with all of this stuff and then we'll let it start fermenting. Okay, briefly talking about why we're adding this vanilla extract. Uh, we don't really need it, but my idea is if we're going for like a banana split style tasting beer, we've got the banana, we've got the lactose, you know, providing that ice cream kind of flavor, but I think the vanilla is gonna help to just marry all of those flavors together. So you don't really need it, but I think it's gonna help give more of that impression of smoothness, sweetness, and kind of ice cream like flavor. So we're gonna whack this into the fermenter now. Uh, and then just let it sit there and marry in with the rest of these flavors over the next couple of weeks. Oh, it smells good. 
<laughs> All right, so just a really quick uh, blitz with the paint mixer. Idea here is to just air it and work a little bit, put it a bit of oxygen, and just help our juice get off to a really healthy start. Do it for like half a minute or something, that should be enough. For the last time, the banana head goes on. <laughs> All right, we are finished. Time for our yeasties to go in. Okay. Now, we're gonna seal this thing up, leave it alone for the next couple of weeks. My suspicion is it should be finished fermenting in a week and a half to two weeks. So when that happens, we're gonna get this thing into a keg, cold crash it, transfer it to a new keg, because there's quite a lot of gunk, I'm guessing, that's gonna come out into the first keg with this one, and then we'll be ready to drink this thing. So we'll see you guys next time on the tasting video. As always, thanks for watching and um, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. Be on guys, catch you next time.